श्रावण सरी दोन हजार सतरा प्रस्तुत अतिथी वाक्यांमध्ये आपल्या सहर्ष स्वागत आजचे प्रमुख अतिथी तथा वक्ते श्री तुकाराम मुंडे सर आपले लाडके अकॅडमिक डी श्री पिनाकिंग सर उपस्थित प्राध्यापक वृंद आणि उपस्थित माझ्या विद्यार्थी मित्रांनो पाखरं आकाशात झेप घेताना वाटा शोधत नाही त्यांना त्यांचा मार्ग स्वतः शोधावा लागतो तो अंतकरणाच्या प्रेरणेने आणि या अंतकरणाच्या प्रेरणेचा ऊर्जा स्रोत म्हणजे आत्मविश्वास आणि या आत्मविश्वासाला जेव्हा उधान आलेलं असतं ते वय असतं तरुणाईचं ते वय असतं तारुण्याचं मराठी तरुणांच्या मनगडातील ताकद व उरातील हिंमत म्हणजे शिव छत्रपतींनी स्थापन केलेलं स्वराज्य आणि याच स्वराज्याच्या कौतुकास्पद आपण साजरा करत असलेला उत्सव म्हणजे श्रावण सेवा प्रशासकीय क्षेत्रात काम करत असताना आपल्या प्रशंसनीय कार्यासाठी तसेच धडाकेबाज निर्णयांसाठी व स्वच्छ कारभारासाठी प्रसिद्ध असलेले आपल्या सर्वांच्या ओळखीचे श्री तुकाराम मुंडे सर आपल्यामध्ये उपस्थित आहेत हे आपलं भाग्य सरांबद्दल सांगायचं झाल्यास बीड जिल्ह्यातील बीड जिल्ह्यातील तारसोना गावी या गावी सरांचा जन्म झाला सरांचं दहावीपर्यंतचं शिक्षण हे जिल्हा परिषद त्याच गावातील जिल्हा परिषद शाळेमध्ये झालं व पुढे जाऊन महाविद्यालयीन शिक्षणासाठी सरांनी औरंगाबाद गाठलं तेथील गव्हर्नमेंट कॉलेज ऑफ आर्ट्स अँड सायन्स येथे सरांनी पुढील पदवीचं शिक्षण घेतलं लहानपणी अतिशय प्रतिकूल परिस्थिती असतानाही सरांनी जी झेप घेतली ती खरंच कौतुकास्पद त्यानंतर पदवी शिक्षणानंतर पदव्युत्तर शिक्षण सुद्धा सरांनी घेतलं आहे व पुढे प्रशासकीय सेवेत जाण्याचा निर्णय घेतला सद्यस्थितीला सर पुणे येथे पुणे महानगर परिवहन महामंडळ लिमिटेड येथे चेअरमॅन म्हणून काम बघतात आणि सर आज आपल्या इथे आले तर मी आपले अकॅडमिक डीन सर श्री पिनाकिंग सर यांना विनंती करतो की त्यांनी सरांचा सत्कार करावा प्रशासकीय कार्य म्हटलं तर अडचणी येणारच विरोधही होणार याची सरांना जाण होते पण या अडचणींना स्वतःला सिद्ध करण्यासाठी मिळालेली संधी सर मानत कारण नदी ही अधिक सुंदर दिसते जेव्हा ती दऱ्या खोऱ्यातून वाहते नदी ही अधिक सुंदर दिसते जेव्हा ती पर्वत रांगांमधून वाहते याच प्रकारचं सरांचं कार्य तर तुमच्या आतुरतेला मी पूर्ण विराम देऊ इच्छितो आणि पुढील सूत्रांसाठी मी माझ्या सरांकडे धन्यवाद मला प्रश्न असा पडला आहे की डू यू एक्सपेक्ट मी टू स्पीक और यू वॉन्ट क्वेश्चन आन्सर सेशन ना वॉट डू वॉन्ट मी टू स्पीक ऑन चॉईस इज युअर्स आय कॅन स्पीक ऑन नंबर ऑफ टॉपिक्स वॉट डू वॉन्ट मी टू स्पीक ऑन ओके 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 Anything else from students? Okay. Civil service has a career option. Okay. That's it? Okay. Uh, good that I am here and I am interacting with uh, some uh, professionals uh, because nowadays professionalism is the key word all over the world. You should be professional what you, you should be doing. and uh, as we know government colleges particularly medical colleges are most of it because of uh, definitely the advantages over private sector hospitals and colleges uh, you are one among those who have made it here and uh, i hope that you make bright careers in your future as well uh, as far as uh, career uh, i'll just start with my synopsis how i grew up and then i come to the questions which i posed here uh, but the first and foremost thing i am not the only person or i am not the person who has come from the most uh, 
weak position to achieve this uh, situation or position. There are thousands many who are poorer than me, who have much more difficulties than me, still they have made it to the top. So it's not the issue where you are born. It's not the situation uh, which determines your fate. Actually it is your efforts, your plans, your thoughts and your actions which determine your fate. So it doesn't depend upon uh, necessarily the conditions which in, in which you are born. So it depends on your attitude towards life, your aptitude towards life and whether you take uh, appropriate decision at appropriate time. If you do that, uh, and you should take the responsibility for whatever decisions you take. You should not pinpoint somebody else. If my father said so, I did so, otherwise I did not have wish. Uh, my mother said so, or somebody else said so. Whatever decision you take, you should abide by it, you should take ownership of that, and then I think, if you do that, you will be able to take right decisions. So, it's not about background, it's not about uh, rural or urban, it's not about so much of intelligence also, because I believe uh, geniuses are very very few in the world and most of us including me are common persons at a particular IQ level and most of us as human beings have common IQ level that is more than sufficient to lead a very good life uh, in whatever profession we want to. The issue is only this, are we making uh, good use of that IQ, are we making complete use of that IQ and are we making the use of this IQ in a manner which contributes to the betterment of society as a large because you cannot be better by making society worse. You cannot be. Maybe in short term this is possible, but in long term, when you look at a long term perspective, it is not possible that you become better at the work of society. So, uh, as told in uh, uh, my introduction, uh, I hail from a B district. Uh, those who are from Maharashtra might be knowing B district is uh, uh, one of the most backward districts in Maharashtra. Uh, obviously because of the lack of facilities, uh, including there is no industrialization. If you look at uh, Maratwada, except say um, Aurangabad, little bit of Nandira, little bit of Lapur, uh, there is no industrialization per se. Uh, agriculture per se is again the same issue because we don't have irrigation facility per se, it's an arid zone. So it falls in a uh, scarce region, so that is not also much issue over there. So as a result, uh, whoever comes from backward areas per se, uh, what we can say is, has two options. Either one is to uh, tide along with the tide which is there prevalent, whether you go in agriculture, your forefathers are doing, you also continue doing this one area. Second is, of course, get educated, try to do something, uh, whatever field you want to be, whether you want to be a teacher, a lecturer, or government service, that is other issue, or in a private sector. Third issue is, I believe, uh, is not a good one. So you choose something, uh, what you call Mundaikam. That is third area particularly towards, if you look at uh, the history of any nation, for example. Uh, always this anti-social activities take place somewhere where they think that they are different and they don't have any other alternative source. So that strives them. So in earlier days, say 10, 15 years back, you look at the Bihar. It was very difficult for anybody even to doctor to practice over there because there was, they were kidnapping cases because that type of Mundaism law and were not there and there was a poverty. As a result, there was a migration towards cities like Mumbai, Delhi, where they used to come as a laborer, work here and then uh, feed their families. So that is the third part. Of course, there are alternative careers, but it's your choice what to make. So, uh, as most of you might be, I hail from agriculture family. So whoever is from agriculture family, generally works in the farm uh, throughout his uh, or her uh, childhood. Maybe at different ages. I started uh, working in the farms at the age of, say, I think, eight. That is after taking the third uh, standard examination. Maybe some might have taken up the fifth or seventh, but that's what we acquainted with. In the villages, that's how the economy works. And it's not something forced, but it comes natural to you. Because everybody in the family works uh, so that you earn something, you grow, you start to earn better bread and better lives. So that's what happens. The same thing happened with me. So nothing new about it. Maybe the context was different. Uh, depending on your uh, economy, depending on your family size, and depending on your um, parents, uh, the decisions are taken, and depending on your own attitude. 
whether you want to work properly, not properly, you are uh, what we call uh, very naughty or obedient, these things do count. But ultimately, uh, when you grow, you decide what is to be done. And as at that point in time, uh, maybe today is not a situation, uh, I never knew purpose of my education, or for that matter, purpose of my life. It is never taught in that way, uh, whether in urban or rural areas. Nowadays, we have become, yes, early based education, you have to be this, you have a lot more electronic media, so the communication information gap, which was earlier, that is not there anymore. So maybe at that point in time, that was the order of the day. So I never knew why I am going to school. Because I was going to school basically because I was asked to go to the school by parents and uh, uh, I was studying. So that is how I grew up as a child, uh, going to the school, going to the farm, doing work as my brothers and sisters and uh, nearby all the villagers did. And then till 10th I was there. After 10th uh, I had been to um, Aurangabad. Uh, I did 11th and 12th science. Uh, uh, fortunately, I had a elder brother uh, who was attempting civil services, that is state civil services. Uh, he got selected in uh, state civil services at that point in time in Tashilda and then he went on to become deputy director and additional collector. Uh, he was the one who instrumental in taking decision saying that, um, as we say, not I, but to the collector I said. So, would you like to be a collector or for that matter I? So I did not have any idea what this collector is all about. I did not have any idea about what this IAS is all about. I said, okay, we'll do it. So as if it is something, uh, uh, 10th standard or 12th standard examination. Because we really didn't know, I really didn't know at least, uh, what does it mean. I said, okay, we'll do it. So he decided the course of my action, not me at that point in time. So he said that we'll do 11th and 12th as a science, then we'll go to humanities, because according to him, whatever his perception and studies out there, uh, uh, we can take one of the two optionals as from humanities and then attempt civil services, that was the strategy behind it. So 11th world I did science from SB Science College Aurangabad. Uh, I did get good marks, I think I have both the, uh, uh, what we can groups, this PCB and PCMD, so I have PCMD. And uh, I could have easily got admission for medical college because I think it had 89-90% some group out there. But I never applied because I never wanted because, not because I had thought, but because I had been told that you have to be collector and you have to go to humanities. So that was the course of action. The real state starts after that. I took admission in uh, arts, uh, government arts and college, uh, science college, because that is the only English medium college available there. And why did I choose that? Because that is the only English medium college, because there is no other reason that. And, uh, then started studying for uh, graduation. As I started studying and then as I realized, then he bought me some question papers, then he gave me, then gave me syllabus. I started, then I started realizing it's not going to be a, a cakewalk for me. So by the time I was graduate, uh, I had uh, this social, uh, sociology, history and political science because in Marathwada University at that point in time, these three subjects, and still I think three subjects at graduation level, it's not an honors degree over there. So after that, uh, he attempted uh, PG along with preparation for this. Uh, then I started realizing, no, it's quite a big, uh, big challenge. Uh, it's not going to be easy. But whatever guidance I got from my brother and uh, colleagues and the lecturers and teachers in the college, I started preparing. I graduated. Then uh, once I got graduated, uh, I gave my first attempt in 97 because I got graduated in 96. And at the same time, I was uh, I applied for PG in the university department in political science or what we call politics. That was the first attempt in 97. If you know the SIC over here, uh, State Institute for Administrative Careers. And that is just uh, opposite CST. Uh, there is an entrance exam for that uh, to get admitted over there, which actually guides the aspirant uh, civil servants uh, for taking examination. The facilities are you get a hostel, uh, not much academic, but you get an environment over there because other uh, people, students coming over from all over Maharashtra by screening test, they go there, they study there, 
and most of the Maharashtrian IAS officers, 80-90 percent have help from their because not necessarily some guidance, but group activities will come to learn from peer learning, how to attend, what are the ways to tackle the exam, how to study, how to write answers, and all those techniques we learn from each other, and that's how we go ahead. That's that, that's how it works. So I attempted there, I got into it. Uh, you will be surprised to know that that was the first time I away from home. Because at college level I was with my brother, up to 10th I was in my village, so it was very very difficult for me. At that point in time, I thought that I should be going back to Aurangabad, staying with my family and studying there. But the other thought at that point in time, if I go back, I will not get this experience and this exposure, which is required uh, for this exam. And my brother had asked me, would you want to go to join private coaching in Delhi also? I said, no, no need. Not because necessarily because I did not, uh, did not want to go there. One of the fears was, how do I live there? I cannot stay away, go away from my family. Because psychologically, I have not stayed away from my family. So these are some of the things in your life which actually change course of your career, your life. So I believe, as you are staying here, when you parted your ways of staying with your family, maybe at the 12th standard or 10th standard, would have experienced something different. Doing things at your own, taking mundane, maybe based on mundane decisions, but taking decisions at your own, right from bed making to going to college and eating, how much to study, when to study, what to play, what not to play, what to purchase, what not to purchase, what quality, everything. Those are the decisions which make us richer also, depending on what course of action you choose. Uh, it teaches us economics. And uh, uh, why economics, uh, particularly village level, uh, I believe so. It's a common sensical economics which is better in village level or those who are actually taking decisions. Uh, I had the chance to go to USA uh, three, four backs for, three, four years back for uh, training of one month. I was there in Duke University. And I was doing tax analysis and revenue forecasting this uh, training session for one month over there. So one of the professors told me there, uh, when we were discussing uh, uh, of the classroom, how do we teach economics? So he told that, generally, uh, if you want to teach a child the economics, what do you do? We give a particular money for a particular uh, month and you ask him to Mend your ways for a particular day. The first month, maybe he is not correct. He learns what is economics. How to spend or what to spend, he prioritizes his things. That is the decision making power on different sectors. So, if you are giving education what we call uh, uh, learning, that is activity based learning that we call, that now our education system is moving towards, which is actually necessary. That gives you much more uh, confidence in yourself for making decisions. And that is one of the reasons why government colleges are, for medical purposes, are chosen better, or engineering colleges for that matter, government are better than private. The reason is activity based learning is far better as compared to private colleges. So that is one of the inputs which you and me in government colleges were. Maybe we have some other disadvantages also. It's not as if it's everything is hanky dory here and very good greener on the other side also. It can be reversed also. So if you activity, learning by doing is there, your professionalism grows. So when I started actually this study in civil services in 97, I realized that yes, I have read many books. And I thought that as compared to others, if not better, I was equal with them. So, there is three stage examination as you know, preliminary, that is a screening test, then men's examination and then there is interview. So, I qualified preliminary, I was it was expected. And as men's comes, because that is much more tough for him, it is not objective, it is subjective. You have general studies, you have two optionals, you have essays, you have languages, there is something 2300 or something marks at that point in time. So I could not qualify in the first attempt. Uh, so generally, uh, at that point in time, seats were very less, in the range of 200 to, to, to 300. Total uh, 
uh, vacancies for which recruitment was made. Nowadays, it has gone up to 1000 to 1300. So, this much difference is there. And that was why the reason of this because age of retirement was reduced from 60 to 58. So, it had an immediate impact. So, that reduction has led to recruitment level, retrenchment of recruitment level. So, generally, it was 500 to 600, it has gone to 200 to 50, 300 this range. So, competition has become much, much more tougher for that matter. And as a result, uh, merit had gone up. So, I, I think in the first attempt got something 865 months out of 2000. So, it was quite disappointing. Uh, but then I, again I attempted 98, the next attempt. Again I got uh, qualified in prelims. Again I failed in men's examination. The only silver lining was from 865, I have moved something, I think, uh, 930 or 940. So, 100 odd marks, 90 odd marks. But that was not good enough. And the uh, merit was going up and up. And my marks, the expected marks for qualifying uh, for interview, not even selection also, uh, were not expected. Then again, attempted third one in 99. I got prelim qualified. I qualified men's in the third attempt. Because in two attempts I realized it's not how much I read, that's what we make a mistake. For one subject I read 10 books, so I am better than others. That's a mission model. Why? I'll explain sometime. Uh, so in the first attempt when I did not get expected marks in or general studies or history or political science, instead of reading two books for each topic, I started reading five books. In 99 I started reading for 10 books. It is of no use. Uh, if you want to do research, yes, that's the way. But you are not here for research purposes. You are particularly qualified for the examination. That uh, difference we should actually make while attempting uh, this examination. So, at the time of examination, yes, you should be a student. Not throughout the year. The academics, you have to learn. The you have to score. It's required you score. But throughout the year, you don't be parishati. You be a student. Just not for the sake of passing. Yes, during the exam you do that. It's required. Otherwise, you will not get certified. You will not be recognized as a doctor. You are not qualified doctor because even you have a research. You can be a PhD doctor, but it's not there. So throughout the year, you have to be a student. You have to learn the things. During the examination, you have to be able to project what is asked. That yes, I know the concept. I know the answer. This is the answer. So you get better marks because that's how you are graded. Fortunate to unfortunate. That's the gradation system. Uh, so I went on reading. So when I got qualified men's, I thought now uh, I'll be selected. So then I got interview call and uh, I attended interview. Uh, uh, that was I think 300 at that point in time. Results came, I was not qualified. Final results. So by that time I had completed my graduation, post graduation also, a 98. And that's the age where you as a student, after PG particularly if you are doing PG or if you, after graduation if you are not doing uh, uh, post graduation, you feel that you are unemployed and you should not be dependent on family for any purposes. You are so called uh, Swabhiman. Come to the picture, why should I be dependent? Come and work, I will not depend. I will do something but I will not ask for money from any of my relatives. That is the sort of thinking and it is not wrong thinking. The only issue is there is a trade-off. Whether you just want to depend for financial purposes in your family if it is capable and they generally support you when they are not capable, they support you. Yes, come what may, I will give whatever money is required, but please do well. You want to do this? By doing so, if you are doing well, what you will do honestly, that's good enough. If you don't want, then how are you going to, whether you want to go to, because you start, want to start earning, what about your career? You really want to earn in the field which you are, you are interested, that's okay. If you are not, because you want to do civil services, you are not qualified. So you want to do something to earn money. So are you compromising on your career? And that's where your decision after graduation or post-graduation will be. And particularly for uh, medical students, it will be much more crucial because you, I think, internship and then you have to go to some rural area for some months or one year or something like that. Most of the students during that time, medical students, and I have experience because I have worked as a CEO, so I have handled some interns over there. The medical officer is there, my DHU is there, 
and there is some underhandling, you go there, at the end of this, this much is there. This is not neither good for you nor good for society. If you really want to prepare, take a conscious call. Take a conscious call when to do it and how to do it. Doing civil services after uh, doctor is not something seen. It's really good. Nobody prevents you from doing that. But at the same time, you cannot compromise on your professional ethics also. Because if you are going to compromise on professional ethics as a doctor, I don't think you can be a good professional public servant person. Because if you are compromising somewhere, that means you are choosing a means which is not really a moral in that sense. And the leadership, whatever leadership you have got, whether it's through independence in time or after independence, all throughout the world if you look at it, those are the leaders who are really contributed to betterment of society, those are the ones who are absolutely morally proud. The means are as good as ends. So you can compromise on means also. Yes, in short run case is easy. By do, going to rural areas or in a PSC, still you can study. Nobody prevents from you studying. If you are in the PSC, you can treat the patients. At the end of the day, yes, you have time for studies. The issue is should I, if I am studying in Nair Hospital for say 4 years, 5 years, should I be going to tribal area, girl children, and will I be able to stay there? If you are not able to stay there for one year, how are you going to stay in that area, work here, at least for 7 to 10 years of your career if you are going to be chosen as a civil servant or a public servant? Because that's the way you have to do. Right from sub-district level, district level, you are there. And you have to make difference there. If you cannot make difference, then you cannot make difference at state level at all. Because the intricacies, the cutting edge lies there. The people who need government intervention are the ones who are neglected to stay in those areas. Not necessarily Mumbai. It doesn't mean a Mumbai may retain. Mumbai may retain. But that is required because the access through to services, access uh, to well-being, the means, is not as plenty as it is available in urban areas. So the choice will have to be taken, an unconscious choice. If you really want to know, I don't want to waste one year, you have other options, but don't deceive yourself and don't deceive somebody else. So that is my first advice. So when I, at 99, when I got, did not qualify finally, so I decided you now something had to be done. And this cannot go on. Some of my colleagues who were there, they got through. I was the one who had left behind. So I thought I will take one MPC attempt. After getting one post, I am secure and then I will try UPC. Now whether that was good or bad, that we will discuss. So in 2000, because 99, if I write an exam, many exam in October, November, the result comes in April of 2000, interviews are in April, May. So by May, in the month of May 2000, I get the final result which I was disqualified. So I had to decide, so by, in that I had applied for this uh, NET GRF uh, examination in UGC. So I think that result came around something, um, I don't remember, maybe in, in the around October, November 2000 something. I got qualified, I got GRF. So once I get GRF, I have 5000 in my hand, per month. That was the rate, I maybe changed. So I thought now I am financially independent. Uh, because our journey in life, uh, you should also remember, is very intricate. That may sound a little philosophical, but that's true. When you are born, you are totally dependent. Absolutely, right? From uh, walking, talking, feeding, everything you are dependent. Then suddenly, by the time you grow, you want to be independent, right? From maybe 5th standard, 6th standard. Why are you telling me? I am old enough. So that thinking grows, grows, grows. By the time you are graduating, you think that why should you depend? So you want to be independent. And after that, you think that once you got a job, then you are absolutely independent. So nobody can tell you what should I do. If you wish, nobody would have told you anything when you were even a small one day also. Depends on your attitude. So that thinking is there because this uh, young energy is, is, is very, very heavy energy. The issue is how do you channelize that energy? That energy required. Atta Bhotana Sahib Laki upon Koop Kamtutala. So you are a kind of the loot tailor, Koop Yoga Ukla. That's a Ukla Futta. Ukla Futta Madekai Sukhna. It's natural. The issue is only because of the Utu Dao 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 D
That is the only issue. So you should always have that energy, but don't waste that energy. Please channelize that energy. In the direction you want to. Unfortunately, that is the energy has to. The channel is not doing it. That is a waste of energy. That is a problem. That is a problem. I expect you not to allow that to happen. You should channel your own energy by deep thought. As you will look in a second, I will say, second, not possible. Because you are on my take is something different. Five fingers are not the same. Your aptitude, decide your aptitude. You have to decide, nobody else can. You can take advice from thousands. You can read. You can take counsel. But don't imitate anybody. Don't imitate me also. Emulate. You should emulate, never emulate. If that was the case, robotic cigarettes would be necessary, robotic time would be. Even in genome, your medical science, cloning, you cannot clone the character person. You may be physically possible, all characters of that human being or somebody, you cannot replicate as such. You are emulating there also. So try to emulate, whatever is good, you should try to emulate. We are always taking inspiration. I always like some movies. Now, uh, earlier when college I used to see that more. Um, uh, but after your profession it becomes much more difficult. So, you should always see, the, whenever I used to see movies, I want to be like this. And if I see other movies, I want to be like that. So this is what we call in philosophical terms, chanchal man, this is a very sensitive mind. Now, whether you are in control of the sensitive mind, or the mind is total of yours. That's an issue. And that's the decision making. You should be absolutely sensitive. But you should not be emotional. And unfortunately, we don't differentiate between two things. Being emotional and being sensitive. If you take a decision by being emotional, most of the time your decision should be wrong. If you are going to take a decision by being sensitive, most of the time your decision will be correct. Because sensitivity applies to mind. That is brain. Emotionalism applies hard. And when you become sensitive, it means there is a reasoning in that. In emotionalism, not necessarily reasoning in that. I am not saying emotionalism does not have reasoning. It is there. The predominant factor is whether reason or emotion. That is the issue. The difference between sensitivity and uh, what you call emotions. So you should take and incline to take decisions which are more sensitive, not more emotional. So if you take that, make a difference, you can make better choices, better decisions. So as a result, I decided now, I'll, uh, I got JRF, so I applied in Pune University for registration, I got registration, and I started getting my 5,000. So I said, yes, at least this one, I don't want to depend on uh, anybody. So 5,000 are good enough at that point in time to survive for a month. And I applied, because the application something of 2001, because by that time the application deadline for the NPC forms was gone. So I thought I'll apply. I have done JRF, now I can become a lecturer also. I can start research also. So I started the research by applying on uh, India's foreign policy. And uh, meanwhile, I started with this MPC. So the application form came, I applied. I think uh, the preliminary examination took place in the month of some July, August, September 2001, something in that range. I thought I would be qualified. Because it was unfortunately at that point in time, and today also, MPSC and UPSC, the civil services, union public service and state civil services, are totally different. Which is not the case in other states, which are portal winners. As a result, UP, Bihar, people, the syllabus is the same, ours is different. And that is one of the reasons why state candidates, most of them, they will make to civil services. Which is the reverse case in uh, UP, uh, UPP, ECSC or yeah. So when I started study, I had to start in Magab. What is the height of Himalayas and what is the this and that, this type of questions. So it was something very difficult for me to memorize something by heart. If this is the objective type of questions. Whereas in civil services, analytic, even if it is objective, it is very, very analytical. So you have to apply mind. So other than facts, your analogy, your knowledge, application of mind, uh, consistency, all these things are in the objective type questions also. I got quali uh, I expected to qualify, so I started preparing for men's examination. Uh, I did that. And as of the order of the day, what happened, 
this 2001 result of my uh, prelims came towards the end of 2002. So one more year or last. I lost 2000, I lost 2001, I lost 2002 also. I took examination after October something. Then that result came in, final, uh, the men's result came in something 2003 somewhere. I don't remember the exact month, but it's something I believe again March, April or May, something like that. So it was 2003. I appeared for interview. That result came something finally in the August, September 2003. I believe so, yes, around that something. So the exam which I had waiting and I had made a choice in 2000, I'll attempt one attempt, I'll get a good post in MPC in one year and the next attempt I'll give maybe 2000 or at the most 2001. So I had lost 2001, I had lost 2002, I had lost 2003. See, in between research was going on, but because I was not really interested in academics per se, and the time was there, there came an advertising of lecturership. And there was some Jalga college was there, applied, I got qualified, so I joined there in I think 2001 or 2, I, I don't, maybe 2002. After a month's time, there was advertisement from government college. I applied there also, I got qualified. And I got, I left that job and joined Ismail Yusuf College, Government of College in Yogeshwari near Andheri. So I joined there, that was I think in the year 2000. Two. Yes, it was in the year 2002. And then interview there, I got qualified. I got class 2 course, accounts finance class 2. So I was uh, qualified in the month of October 2003, something like that. And then I decided okay, I will take next item. But I think 2002, I don't remember. Then, then I decided I will take 2004 exam. So that is, um, the result came around I think 2000, April, May, August 2003 finally. So, next attempt of civil services will be in 2004, I'll take that one. In between, this lectureship was going on for a year. So, 2002 to 2003, maybe August to April May. And when I had to take 2004 attempt, because that was uh, what we call a contractual lectureship, then later on, that was the uh, early basis of one. Then on the ad hoc and then on the contractual. So contractual exists was the, the first batch to be included by the government at that point in time. 8,000 rupees per month is a fixed payment. So I have to take a call. Now I am going to attempt civil services. The last attempt over there in 2004. Should I continue with the job or should I leave the job? I have to make a decision. So I gave a thought. Because this is not my domain, I said. I don't want to continue. I quit that job. I started preparing for civil services because on the one hand I had got accounts finance class two that was also not interested but at least that backup was there. So even if I leave this job doesn't matter I can again get a lectureship. So I took that left that job and started preparing. And I started preparing then uh, for 2004 I I went to Delhi. I went to Delhi not to join any class but because I thought that. I should not feel bad that I have not done something so that I have not got qualified. That was the gut feeling in me. So I went to Delhi. As I was doing research in Pune University, and as you know, there is a culture in hostel, uh, what you call parasites. So that culture is very much in JNU. So what I did, I took a letter from my HOD saying that I am going for research purpose in JNU, whereas I was very for civil services. But I stayed for two, three months. So I got a feel over there, what is happening over there. The private class, I visited the students who are actually preparing in JNU and most of uh, them get qualified. I interacted with them, I got some feedback and then I came back after 2-3 months, uh, by the end of December 3. So, uh, started preparation. I took prelims, I was confident to get through. I started preparing mains, I prepared for mains and with this experience of 3 attempts, MPC, research and the failure at the lectureship. I think lectureship contributed to understand what an examiner looks in your paper. <laughs> because when I am assessing a student, I have a different perspective. When I am writing, I think that lectureship, he did not read a paper, he had to something like this. I do not discount that fully, but the issue is that 
at least in Maharashtra, because I know of Maharashtra, I have studied in Maharashtra, at least in Maharashtra I used to be around study. Because I had interactions with my lectures when I got the marks because uh, in graduation level, he used to say that, I just look at how many supplements here, on that basis I give the marks. <laughs> I do not say all of you do that or all some of them do that. Maybe there are some black chips everywhere. So we build the generation, no, MPC means corruption, without corruption you can't do it. And I just forgot to tell one antecedent, when I am 99, I have not qualified. At that point in time, one of my friends qualified in customs and uh, exercise. At that point in time, he was already selected and working as an ARTO, Assistant uh, Regional Traffic Officer, ARTO BID. BID is my name. The people all over Mara, um, BID started saying that, he has got qualified because he has earned a lot of money, he has given the money, that's what he has qualified. I am not qualified because I am not able to give the money. So these rumors will always be there. And you should never believe this. At least as I can say with civil services in peace, I can vouch for that. There is no question about that. But at that point in time, your mind forces you to think, no, this is possible. He does not know anything. He has done and he has not written properly. Still he has got more mass. I have done so much, I have read so much, I have not got a mark, there is some problem with the system, not with me. If you are in this mode, you are in denial mode. Please don't go in the denial mode. That will hurt your career like anything. Please don't. You interested. If you think that you are right, please share with somebody who knows the issue. Interact with and then take a decision. Don't take a decision on the basis again emotional zone. No, I had read so much, he did not do so much. In the exam, he did not write supplements, he had got more marks. I have done so much, written so much, still I have not got. So I had drawn figure, diagram, he had not and still he has got more, I have not got more. They are not different and when I come to preparation of civil service, I will let you know what are those factors. So, when I was writing the main examination, that is a subjective type, I had prepared that examination on professional basis, as if I am the assessor, what will I look into the answer? And I was pretty confident when I wrote the examination because uh, we start with general studies. The next day there is a essay, an English language, a third language, and then optional subjects start. So I had history and political science as two options. General studies was okay, essay was okay, language was only qualifying or not issue. History came. And I had always had problem in history paper first, that's the ancient history and medieval history. But I have prepared thoroughly. So when I looked at the question paper, there, there are five questions I had to attend. Each question can 60 marks, the 300 marks. So first and fifth one is compulsory. I, I think there is the same pattern right now, little bit of difference. And then out of remaining four or five, we have to attend three. So I knew I can attend one very well, I can attend number five, though both the compulsory questions. I can attend two very well, but the one which was remaining, the fifth question, I knew the whole answer, but I forgot, just forgot the genealogy and the names of the kings, that it was regarding the battle, the dark age. This one king, this fort, this war, this kingdom, the five, six, nine, I just forgot it. Just blank. So I thought something is wrong. And come what may, I would not remember. So what I did ultimately, I did, as usual, you say, whichever you are knowing the list, you should attend at the last. That's again wrong. As the examination, I will always look at the first answer and the last answer. Never write the last answer which you don't know properly. You should write the best answer, the first and the last. In between somewhere you should write one, so that there is possibility of being neglected. That's one of the examples. So what I did, I thought, yes, I will have to write second last. <coughs> the last one I will write the best also. So exam, I did not know the names. And there was other option to write. But I knew that I cannot write as better as one without remembering these names also. So there is a structure to the answer. And unfortunately, we never look at the structure of the answer. When I explain in detail how to tackle exam at that point, so I knew I had a structure. I was missing with some information. The examiner always can and will overlook the lapse on the part of information. 
examiner can never overlook your analysis. Can never. If you remember, do not remember some part of say uh, in uh, physiology, the name of some part, it will not matter much. But the functioning of that part uh, and the analysis of that, if you forget, you will never be forgotten. So I knew this much. So I thought I'll attend that only despite not knowing the names of the king, which was crucial because it was a battle of king, I should know the names. But still I said okay. So when I finished this paper, out of 300, which I had expected if I had to select 170 in that range, I knew I am not going to pass 150. So 50%. It's a good but not good enough to be in the top house. So I thought that now I have to make up in the second paper. Each of them have two papers, 300 and 600 marks. So, second paper, whatever I am losing this 20, I have to make extra effort to gain in the second paper. Second paper as was expected, so it was a good one. So, I thought now, I am okay, maybe not 20, but at least there is a gap of 10 marks, if not 20 marks, as against my expectations. And the last one paper, political science, which was there. Mm -hmm. Before going to the examination, and uh, there is always a thin line between being confident and overconfident. I said to my, because I was, as a SIAC, the parasite, I was staying there. The examination was this sales tax decree Bhavan. Later on, I worked there at two and a half, almost two years as a joint commissioner over there. Um, I told to my friend, I am attending this paper only for the cadre. I know I am going to be selected. Now, at that point in time, maybe it was our confidence or arrogance. Or, if I were to look from my point, it was confidence. But I knew I have to be in control of the situation. And see what happens when in the examination, when you are pressure game, say, as you in cricket last over or last ball per se, you have to get six or four to win. You can you know you can go for six, but there is a chance of being caught ball. So all these situations you are under pressure. Sometimes Dhoni also falters, despite being a good finisher. So that was the situation, because I knew I am going to qualify. The issue is whether I am going to make it to top. The provided that I am in a control of the situation for the three plus three, six hours. That was the end point. Three and three hours, six hours. And I landed in the hall, and uh, I am not too, what you can say, spiritual or what, so I never pray or something, and I have habit Earlier night I never studied. I don't I, I'm that. I never felt that I should study. Come what me. So I used to go to movies earlier night. So that earlier night I have got some this, uh, uh, what is that? Liberty, no not Liberty. Here nearby that movie uh, theater. No, no, no. Behind uh, Bombay Hospital. Metro. Metro. So I had gone there, I watched movie, came back around 1 o'clock. Still I could not sleep because it was and that is the problem during the examination. Please remember this. This is one of the very crucial issues. We try to overstretch ourselves or try to become too sensitive or too emotional or too, what we can say, um, 